In this video, I'm going to simulate the aerodynamics of a popular Audi A4. Then, I'm going to try to change its shape to try to reduce its drag coefficient. Will it work? Let's find out. The Audi A4 is one of the lowest drag cars on the market today. So I wanted to see, how hard is it to make it even lower drag? Can I do it? First, we did a simulation of the regular version, and the aerodynamics is very impressive. For starters, the front is even a little better than the Audi R8, in that it is less blocky, so there is less decelerated flow, and so not as much high pressure, but also, the front of the hood is pretty good in that it doesn't accelerate the flow too much, and so the low pressure zone you usually get is not that bad. That is much better for reducing the lift. However, because the car is designed to be stylish, it kept the fairly sharp junction between the hood and the roof. We can see a low velocity region here, which comes with a high pressure zone, which increases the drag. So this is one area with unnecessarily high drag, and that could be improved. Like other cars we've seen, that sharp junction just naturally leads to a sharper junction at the front of the roof too, which also comes with a low pressure zone. In fact, from a lift point of view, this roof is pretty bad. If this video were about fixing the lift of the A4, this would be the region I'd focus on first. But fortunately, it doesn't affect the drag that much, so we can move away from it. Now, the rear is an interesting region because to reduce the car's drag, you can do two things. The first is to make it have a lower drag coefficient, and the second is to reduce its frontal area. Audi, as many manufacturers do now, went hard for making the rear have a fairly small area, but they still wanted to preserve the rear window and boot contours to give it a more executive look. As such, we get some deceleration of the flow at this junction, and that increases the drag a little. Then in the rear, we see a very small wake, and this is the main draw card of the A4. We get a very small rear and a pretty low drag coefficient too, so the overall drag from this region is very low. That's great, because that is the main contributor to the drag of this car. So Audi has done a great job targeting this area. The underbody generally is very good too, because the flow stays attached almost completely over the front nose, so we still get good low pressure for downforce, but not so much drag. Audi actually does a really cool trick to get that flow attachment, and that is by using this very small air dam. How this works is without it, the nose is very sharp, so as we have seen in other simulations, it is very likely that the flow will just separate as it comes over it. So by putting this tiny air dam here, they do two things. The first is that it creates this virtual buffer, where you have this combination of some air hitting it, slowing slightly, and that provides a cushion for other air to race around that lip without separating. The second thing is that you also have effectively a thicker front lip, but just in a stepwise fashion, which also reduces the separation. It's a really cool idea, and a different solution to the one I proposed two weeks ago with the Infinity Q50. Both work very well, but in very different ways. On our Patreon, I also look at how a larger air dam on this car works, and you can find the results along with a bunch of other car simulations on our page there. And the larger air dam really affects the entire car's flow because it's at the front. Now, Audi does have front wheel spoilers on this car, but they have cleverly developed them to mold into the underbody instead of just sticking out like flat plates. And from on top, we can get a good idea as to what they're actually doing. So you can see at the front, the flow blows out and that creates wakes and drag, which is bad. But it is the lesser of two evils because by blowing out the front like that, you starve the front wheels of high velocity flow, which reduces their wakes. And the front wheels usually produce far greater wakes than these smaller ones from the spoilers. So overall, these spoilers actually reduce the drag. The rest of the underbody flow is good. It stays attached, so that is low drag and also good for producing downforce. However, when we get to the diffuser, there is some room for improvement. You can see that there is just a very gentle one here. The angle is slight and sure the flow still stays attached and that is good for drag reduction. But there is so much more potential here because if you run the car with a more aggressive diffuser, you can reduce the wake size even more and even the rear area and the drag will drop through two mechanisms then. So this is the region I'm going to focus on to reduce the A4's drag. But first let's quickly see the vortices of this car because it features some interesting ones. Something I'm really surprised at is how big the side mirror vortices are. I mean, this is a very advanced car, aerodynamically speaking. So to get such large vortices here is quite unexpected. That not only contributes to the drag, but also to the noise. And because this car is pitched in an executive style sedan, the prominent cabin means that the A-pillars are quite upright, and that comes with a little vorticity too. The front wheels are pretty good overall. The journey vortices are really bad. Perhaps a little more work on the front wheel spoilers is needed. Apart from that, the rest of the car is pretty good, the wake definitely has some vortices, but that is to be expected. Overall, this car has an impressive drag coefficient of 0.24, which as I said, this car was built for low drag, so trying to make it even lower drag is a tall order, it's already very low, even for a production car. And just as general information, the list comes in at 1.5 kilos, which is really good, it's almost neutral. Now how am I going to improve this diffuser? I don't want to alter the car too much, so what I'm actually going to do is actually simply extend the diffuser's rear surface along its original trajectory by a few inches. The idea is that I already know that the flow should have enough energy to stay attached at this original angle, because it does with the original one. So by making the diffuser longer, I can kick the flow up a little more and reduce the wake size and hence the drag. It also doesn't span the entire width because I want to get clean flow onto it and nothing from the rear wheels. If I use the rear wheel wakes, I'd probably need to add guard vanes to isolate regions that may be stalling. And the extended diffuser is really sharp, like 
it might have been cut you, like an ex-girlfriend. Was it successful? The diffuser, I mean, not the ex-girlfriend. Well, the front 90% of the car is mostly unaffected, particularly the top. So that is good because we don't want to spoil Audi's good work there. The wake looks a little better, with it generally being a little smaller and being kicked up a touch. The pressure looks about the same, but the diffuser definitely seems to stabilize the wake, which is better for driving. And this is also the case looking down, where the extended diffuser makes the wake stay in about the same formation over time. And from on top, the extended diffuser is producing higher pressure closer to the car, which agrees with the conclusion that the wake is smaller here, so that should be good for drag. And from these drag orbits, the extended diffuser seems to have kept the rear wheel's drag quite separate from the rest of the wake, and that is likely because there is simply more of a barrier, reducing how much the flow can be sucked in close to the car. Surprisingly, extending the diffuser just those few inches dropped the drag coefficient by 20 counts to 0.22. The lift dropped slightly too. That amount would be in within the area of the simulation still. So these simulations were done with open foam, and if you want to learn how to use open foam, then take our course here. Peace out, amigos.